Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me today. This is Mark Harrell, Senior Pastor of Forest Hills Baptist Church. You know, from time to time I get cards of encouragement from members and from other people. And it's really appreciated as a pastor, especially in times like these, where you feel a struggle of trying to present the Word of God, but of course also with myself uh, working full time and working with patients, trying to make sure they don't have COVID, all of the types of things that we do in medicine, along with the responsibilities as a senior pastor. Recently, I got a card of encouragement from one of our members that really led me uh, to our discussion today on the topic of how to sustain or endure to the end. During these troubling days, uh, many of you, including myself, have wondered how much more can we endure? How much more can we take? You have heard the saying, everybody has a breaking point. Many areas in our lives may have breaking points, but the relationship we have with Christ has to endure, not to be broken. It has to sustain to the end. In Psalms 55 verse 22, cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. Adam Clark, one of the commentaries that I read from time to time, states, while a man is righteous, trust in and depends upon God, he will never suffer him to be shaken. While he trusts in God and works righteousness, he is as safe as if he were in heaven. What a wonderful quote. Why are so many collapsing under the weight of the stress of the pandemic, the social injustice marches, natural catastrophes, and people with socialistic ideals? Why are people apostatizing the faith that they seem to have clinged to just to throw in the towel when the fight is getting tough? I believe it all comes down to trusting God. If you cast your burdens upon him, how could you not endure knowing that the creator of heaven and earth has us right here in his protective hands? 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but have itching ears. They will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn from the listening to the truth and wander off into myths. Have we not seen that today? People following false doctrine because it's just easier. There's less of a challenge upon their lives. You can't trust God to carry your burden and sustain you if you don't trust him being on the throne of your life. For those of you who have traveled on an airplane, let me ask you this question. Now, the rest of you who haven't traveled on an airplane can just play along. If you don't trust the pilot of that plane, whom you have not met, have no idea what kind of pilot he is, and you still got on that plane, then why under God's heaven can't you trust God through faith in Christ with everything in your life? You don't give God just one part of your life. That is to say, sometimes people will make, Lord, I need you on Sunday to make me feel good about myself because I failed you so miserably during the week. The reason we fell him was because we haven't yielded all of our life to him. Some of you have given him the war department, but you kept for yourself commander in chief. If I'm going to endure, sustain, get through these times, I need to let go of my pride, my prejudices, my being in control, and hold on to the promises of God and put my total trust in Him. He will sustain me. He will sustain you. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 22. And you will all be hated for my name's sake. But the one who endures 
to the end will be saved. There's a quote I use from time to time to counsel patients going through difficult times. And the author of this quote may surprise some of you. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. Nothing worthwhile is easy. Your ability to overcome favorable situations, excuse me, unfavorable situations, will provide you with time to demonstrate your strength and termination for success. Always set your standards high. Your greatest achievements lie within the infinite feats you achieve in your life. Martin Luther King Jr. What will your greatest achievements be during a time when there seems to be little comfort and the conveniences you rely upon every day are no longer there? Today is such a time. Samuel Johnson says that the measure of a man is how he treats someone who can do him absolutely no good. Otherwise, doing something for somebody who can't do anything for you. Where do we go from here? When I first arrived at Forest Hills Baptist Church, they were at a pivot point. A balance on one side collapsing due to a split in the body of Christ. The spiritual hemorrhaging by the amputation of the members of the body versus the other side enduring and sustaining yourselves through the discomfort and inconvenience. But you prevailed and you displayed the ultimate measure to the community of what Forest Hills Baptist Church was really about. Now we're facing a different type of battle. A battle that has forced the members physically apart from corporate worship, but yet we still worship. We shall endure. What is the next step? The living word of God states in Joel chapter 1 verses 14 and 15. Consecrate a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land to the house of the Lord, house of the Lord your God, and cry out to the Lord. Alas for the day, for the day of the Lord is near, and as destruction from the Almighty it comes. The Cambridge Bible states that fasting is mentioned as distinctly religious uh, observance, expressive of self-abasement and sorrow of sin and resorted to, especially at a time of some grave disaster, whether on the part of individuals or the nation, in conjunction with prayer or sacrifice for the purpose, if possible, of propitiating God's favor. When was the last time you intentionally fasted to express your sorrow of sin and pray God would forgive sin and heal the land? It doesn't have to be food. It could be fasting from something you really enjoy, uh, let's say social media. And certainly some of you seem to can't go without that. It would be giving up something, anything that you enjoy. But instead of doing that, you're sacrificing that item or that time and you're giving it to God in prayer. In September, we're going to present the church with a card about fasting and prayer with 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 as our focus text. And it states, and many of you are very familiar with this, If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will heal from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the church to be the church. We can no longer play church. The world is depending upon every one of us to be the church, the body of Christ. Let the corrupt land see your faith. Be the salt 
and the light that Christ called you to be. Humble yourself. Pray as if you were seeking the face of God. Turn from your sin. Then God in heaven will forgive your sin and will heal this land. Pastor Chris, Marsha Miller, and myself are working to finalize this, that what, I, what I call um, the power in prayer card because there is power in prayer. And we'll have an outline of the verse coming from 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14. And going by each line and, and explaining exactly um, what the author intended. And I hope each and every one of you would take this very seriously. It's time for God's people to get on their knees, humble themselves, and pray, first of all, for sin. One of the things I tell people the problem in this country is not the demonstrations. It's not socialism. It's not having problems with our borders. And it's not President Trump. The problem we have is sin. And God chastises his children if they continue in their sin. So many people have called ourselves a Christian nation. Well, if that's true, then God would chastise this nation for its unrepented sin. So it's time for the body of Christ to step up, to obey the Word of God, to fast, and to pray. I look forward to getting these cards out um, to the members uh, of our church, and we'll let you know as soon as they are available. In the meantime, you really don't need a card to pray. And I know many of you are praying, and I thank you for that. Thank you for your words of encouragement to your pastor. I really do appreciate it, and I really do need it. Continue to pray for the body of Christ, and especially as we approach September, and prepare ourselves to make a sacrifice and to be obedient to the Word of God. Thank you again for joining me. God bless every one of you.